This next lesson is focused on Native American survival. We're going to assess how the Native Americans managed to survive living on the Great Plains, while also looking at the importance of the buffalo and the horses to the Native American way of life. Looking at the exam board syllabus, this is where you are at at this stage. We looked at the social and tribal structures in the first video. Now we're going to look at ways of life and means of survival on the plains. That's going to be the key focus of this lesson. So, first and foremost, if we just go on to the first slide. As we mentioned last lesson, the Great Plains were very unpredictable and there were many problems with living on the plains. And the tribes had to live with, with a number of issues that they had to deal with. So they had hot summers, strong winds, heavy rain and thunderstorms, very cold winters, and very dry land. And the only reason I talk about dry land is that the other four are quite self-explanatory. The reason I mention dry land is because if there's dry land, there isn't much grass. And if there's not much grass, then there isn't much land for the buffalo to graze on. Likewise, there isn't much land for the horses to eat, so much grass, sorry, for the horses to eat upon. So it could become very problematic if, um, if land is consistently dry. So how did the Native Americans deal with these problems? So I've got loads of skills of Native Americans here. I just want you to think, how would this help them survive? So the first one, horse riding skills and archery skills. Archery means bow and arrows, okay? This would allow Native Americans to hunt buffalo. And so the horse riding skills, if we have a think, horse riding means they can travel quickly across the plains. Archery skills means they can successfully hunt buffalo from a distance without getting too near. Too near equals very dangerous. So the fact they were real skilled horse riders and they would use archery to their to their positives, then on a whole this would be really helpful for the Native Americans. The second skill of the Native Americans was that they had a nomadic traveling lifestyle. So nomadic means they always moved around. They moved to the buffalo. They lived in something called a teepee, which could be packed up in about 10 minutes and loaded onto a travois. Now a travois was a frame which would carry the belongings. So if you had to think here and think, well, how would this help the Native Americans survive? Well, the fact that they are nomadic means they can move to where their food source is. Their living arrangements. Means that it can be packed up very quickly. Now another thing about their living, uh, their living arrangements is that the teepee is a circle. Now this would be very useful in times where there are strong winds. Because the circular shape helps combat the serious winds. So straight away, we've got something here which is really useful. We've got the fact they are nomadic, it means they can move to the food, and it means that they can move very quickly because of the travois that can pack up a teepee and carry an entire tribe's belongings. The Native Americans used every part of the buffalo to survive, minus the heart, which had religious links. Why is this going to help them survive? They are making the most of what they catch. They're being very clever by using every single part. A better word there is they're being very resourceful, which means they use every part, means that nothing's going to go to waste. And nothing will go to waste. 
And by burying the heart, spiritually, they will survive. As the heart being buried means that the soul will help the buffalo grow in numbers. That's perfect. Okay, in terms of them having an urchin, key word here is having reverence for the buffalo, which means they have respect. Native Americans only killed what they needed. They didn't go on, you know, massive, you know, mass uh, hunts. They only killed what they needed. And that goes on to the next bit. The Native Americans had a reverence for the buffalo, a respect. Now, why is this so important? It means that there will be a continued supply of buffalo. Well, that's really important. It means that numbers won't go down overall. Now, the problem is when the white settlers came to America, they killed the buffalo for their hide. There was conflict there because the white settlers and the Native Americans, obviously the, the Native Americans have reverence, the white settlers didn't, they saw the buffalo as profit. During harsh winters, the Native Americans would move into lodges, which were circular and made of earth and timber logs. It would hold up to 60 people. How would this help them survive? The winters were very harsh. The lodges mean they can adapt to their surroundings. And the chance is they would do this after a successful hunt. So they would have a supply of food ready for the harsh winters. So this is an overview of how the Native Americans survived. Okay, it's really important you understand that the plains were not an easy place to survive, but overall it was quite tough. The Native Americans adapted to the situation very well. So the next thing you have to look at is the buffalo hunt. We need to understand what the buffalo hunt was all about and how the Native Americans used the buffalo. So we're going to look at this in a minute. First, we have to look at the buffalo hunt and decide whether it was before a hunt, during a hunt or after a hunt. So what we'll do is we'll say that before a hunt is number one, during a hunt is number two, after a hunt is number three. The Plains Indians would hold ceremonial buffalo dances. This could last for several days and it would bring luck to the tribe and bring the herd closer to them. That would happen before the hunt. Indians would use horses to stampede on the buffalo. They would carefully approach the buffalo so they didn't run away. Buffalo failure could lead to the death of a tribe. That's during the hunt. You didn't just storm on the buffalo. You had to carefully approach them so they didn't spook and stampede. Hides of the buffalo were worked by the women. The hides were pegged out. Hide is like their skin. Flesh was scraped off. The hides would be tanned using the buffalo's brains and made into clothing or teepee covers. It's after the buffalo has successfully been hunted. Only two to three buffalo hunts were needed a year to feed and shelter the band. The Indians had to have a reverence for the buffalo. There was always enough. I mean, you could argue that during a hunt they had to have respect. They didn't overkill. Buffalo would be butchered by the women and children. Some of the body parts, such as the kidney and liver, would be eaten straight away. Delicacies, that's after. Warriors would surround the buffalo and kill them by firing arrows. This is so um, the warrior who killed the buffalo could be identified. Now there's something missing there, and that's during the hunt. But something that's missing there is that warriors would initial their arrows so that after the hunt they can prove their bravery if they were the ones to have killed the buffalo. Scouts would be sent to find a herd of buffalo, that's swamp. Um, a few Native Americans actually used fox skin to try and get close to the buffalo because that didn't spook the buffalo as such. The buffalo heart would be buried. This allowed the spirit to go to the happy hunting ground, which allowed the spirit of the buffalo to go back into the earth, allowing for more buffalo to hunt. And that's after. And parts of the buffalo would be boiled and roasted and the rest would be smoked and dried out in the, in the sun, creating a dry meat which would be pounded into wild berries and make a meal called pemmican. That's after. So with the buffalo hunt, there's lots of religious aspects. 
right so there's lots of strategic aspects you've got to be very careful it has to be very successful or it could put the risk could put the tribe at risk in the long run so this is what the native americans used the buffalo for every single part the skull was used in religious rituals the tongue as a hairbrush hooves glue and tools the fat of the buffalo was used for soap the tendons the veins were used as strings cords and sewing thread the tail was used for fly whisks, uh, whisks and ornaments i mean this is something that you need to understand that the native americans were very resourceful and they used every single part but don't forget as well buffaloes were massive in terms of in terms of weight that they weigh well i think i think i about 100 stone a buffalo could weigh so it's very very large so they could be resourceful and that's why they needed a few for a successful buffalo hunt now the importance of horses to native americans so we've talked about the buffalo horses are also is important if anything um i mean you could argue they're as important as buffalo because without the horses they're not getting there so originally there were no horses in america spanish invaders in the 16th century brought the first horses to the continent and in 1640 the pueblo indians of mexico revolted and captured many of the horses from then on horses were bred and traded between the indian nations so horses came into uh, into the native american sort of setup in 1640. By the 1680s and 90s, Indian nations like the Sioux and the Cheyenne had horses. It allowed them to move out onto the Great Plains and to hunt buffalo. The horse transformed their way of life. They were able to become nomadic hunter-gatherers, living in small bands, and the band was the basic unit of a plain Indian society. So the horses allowed them to become nomadic. Really important this as well it's really focused that they use the horses to develop how they how they live as well as hunting the horse was used as a means of transport for home and family and it changed the nature of war so native americans also fought each other for horses warriors could raid over a much larger distance and give new reason for war stealing horses it also changed the way that individuals fought. It led to horsemanship being an important measure of bravery. If you were a good horse rider, it, was, it showed how brave you were. And the horse became so important to Native Americans at this point here, that they counted their wealth in horses. Your status was judged on the number of horses someone could give away or those that they um, owed gifts to. So the horse was of vital importance. And if you got, you could get this question, explain the importance of horses to the Native American way of life. If you pick out three key things that the horses do, then you've got the answer there. As long as you link it to why that's important to the Native American way of life, that would be fine. Now again, this is an exam question that you can practice. You get a choice of three of these, don't forget, and you must answer two. The key thing is, is that you link X and Y together. So in this question, explain the importance of the buffalo to the lives of the Native Americans. You've got to say what they use the buffalo for and why that was important to their lives. Now the structure, I've only put one there, but I'm gonna just briefly explain it again. So the structure, you can have three point, evidence explain, link paragraphs so that's where you would say um one reason the buffalo were important to the native american lives was due to spiritual reasons for example and then you give two to three lines of evidence specific evidence and then explain this may this was important to the native american way of life because if you did that three times and they say uh, your link is overall spirituality was important 
to their way of life because. You can do that three times. Or you can do two point evidence explain, evidence explain link. So you could, it's one less point, there's more evidence and explain. As long as you've got the linking, the two things together, it is vital. And always rewording the question. That's another really important thing. You need to keep seeing this was important to the lives of the Native Americans because. So this is something you could do. It's an example uh, answer. You copy out the uh, evidence the point and the evidence and then you finish the explanation and that would be a really good task to do overall to finish this lesson so if you can pause it here and do this as an exam response this structure could and should get you eight out of eight if your explanation links to their way of life and does it two or three lines in each one